everybody, thank you for joining us today. My name is Kalia Garrido, and I am here uh, speaking on behalf of Great Data Minds. Um, I head up digital marketing and strategy here, and we have another great conversation for you today before we get cooking. Um, a little bit about us. Great Data Minds is a new breed of data collaborative. We are passionate data activists. We have a staggering amount of experience among our resources and in our advisors. <laughs> um, we offer advisory services and solutions around data management, data ops, self-service analytics, agile program management, and we never forget about the humans, and that is specifically what we're going to talk about today. Um, we also focus on data literacy, transformation, uh, other cool stuff that this, this young woman is going to take us through today. Now, we also produce a ton of great content. So if you are looking for more information when it comes to data and the modernization of data, innovation around data, we have podcasts, blog posts, videos, live events, and like today, webinars and online events. Um, if you haven't already signed up for our newsletter, then please do. This is how you'll keep abreast of all the cool stuff that we have going on. And you can find us at greatdataminds.com. Now today, specifically, this is an exciting one because we're going to talk about what one of our passion projects is here at Great Data Minds, which is really focusing on the humans, right? We talk a lot about the world of data, about the technologies, the systems and the tools, but oftentimes people forget about the data. And I am very happy to introduce you to who I'm sure everybody already knows. <laughs> No introduction needed, but let's give one anyway. It's Julie Burroughs. She is our Great Data Minds visionary and one of our stellar advisors here. Julie, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Kalia. And thanks for being moderator of the month this month. You've done a great job and thanks for that great introduction. It is a passion project with us, the, these humans. I tell you, when did everyone forget about them? And you know, it's funny because we go into all of our projects and we see issues with transformation, people not knowing, you know, what's going on out there. There are human cognitive limitations. Mm -hmm. We live in this accelerated world of change. And yet we think, you know, Gartner says 65% of or better of data projects won't make it. They won't, even, some of them won't even get started. And we, they point to different things like data, dirty data and everything. I swear we point back to the human factor mm -hmm. and we see it every time. And I will tell you, either working with my partners or our partners, I should say, they don't include that in their proposals or talk to their, you know, yeah. customers about it. And we advocate that they become like a transformation coach and help them. But then we, when we're working with our direct clients, they, you know, they don't really spend the money any longer on, this, on the humans. It's, I guess I'll be really blunt about it. I mean, yeah. and it's a miss. It's a yeah. miss. It really is a big miss, and that's what we're advocating here is trying to, you know, really change the way people think. And it says, you know, it's people, pro people, process, and technology. It should be process, technology, excuse me, people should be first. And it feels like it's, you know, process, technology, and people, and people yeah. are always left in the back. Right. And so we're trying to change that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we see it all the time. So what are some of the issues that we see, like, what, what have you specifically seen in the market today? that really affects the world of data and as it pertains to the humans. Yeah, I mentioned earlier, there is so much going on that you can't, you just can't keep up. That, that's one reason why we started Great Data Minds and we have so much information out there. And we need to, we try to boil it down, you know, with our one-on-one -on -one sessions, like people maybe don't really understand the impact of auto ML. So we try to just boil it down or what's a GPU? So we do those one-on-one -on -one sessions, but we sit in meetings all the time when people mention, you know, AI and they go, we're going to use AI in here. And you just see kind of everyone go kind of gray, like, oh yeah, that'll be great. But you know, they don't really understand the core attributes of a, you know, AI project. Right. And so um, it's lack of education is really the first thing that we see. And mm -hmm. um, the other one is lack of communications. We had a large organization we were working with in Atlanta and we um, sold them on the fact that they needed to use Google cloud. And they were so excited. They, you know, the uh, executives had their aha moments, mm -hmm. shall we say. Mm -hmm. So we worked with the executives and all of a sudden we had this accelerated kickoff with the entire data team. And so they said, please, you know, plan this kickoff meeting. So we sent three of our top guys to Atlanta to conduct this meeting. And a half hour in, three of the people just stood up and walked out because they're like, wait, this is huge change. We've been doing this like this for 20, 25 years. Yeah. We didn't know this was coming. Right. So team came back to Denver and said, 
you know what? We got to start looking at the humans. By the way, our client's project was delayed for another six months right. and they lost part of their team. You know, we have, we have a proof of the pudding that 25 to 30% of teams that are introduced to new innovation will not make it through. They'll get into that valley of doubt yeah. and they won't be able to come out. So they either are relocated within the company. You don't want to you, you know, lose that great knowledge, mm -hmm. but you know, they will, we, they will lose them in some form or fashion. Some will just retire because right. they're like, I don't want to go through this change. So um, I'll go back to the lack of education. So I think there's been this trend where everyone more management goes, okay, well, here's some, you know, some credits on one of the virtual, uh, education platforms, go out there and, you know, learn a few things. And they're always, I gotta give them credit. They always are allowing people to do their certs that are so important now in the world of cloud, but why not have education, one-on-one -on -one education live, like how companies thrive with data governance and, you know, having those sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions, live having a key audience that can ask questions. They have proven that live instructor-led training is really good for organizations because it opens up for collaboration and ideation within the teams. Yeah. And then, you know, by the way, film those first couple of sessions and add them, or add them to your LMS and let people, mm -hmm. once again, learn one-on-one, but we're really advocating instructor-led training. I'm, I'm, we have a lot of that on the website, and I put my sales hat on here, but we haven't seen in the past a lot of people that do invest in that. We have seen that those that do invest in live education mm -hmm. will flourish and have more effective teams. Yeah, I mean, that's a fantastic, it's a fantastic point, Julie, because the world of data, the world of technology itself is just moving and changing so fast. And like, oftentimes you find yourself in a conversation and it's almost gotten to the point where you should already know what these things yep. mean. You should already feel like you do, depending on the level of your position. But really the reality is things, how can you keep up with everything? You know, you can't. Yep. And so I know you said you don't want to like, you know, put your sales hat on, but like this kind of training is valuable and like you said we don't see a lot of people that are out there either investing in it or even providing it right so we've seen that to be a game changer at great data minds for sure a lot of virtual training a lot of virtual training where people can't have clarification they can't you know ask questions um and when i say virtual pre-recorded type stuff mm -hmm. but going back to the atlanta account that i mentioned um the other thing was the communications did not happen early loudly you know mm -hmm. um in in a way that um you could get to the team. I, yeah. One of our most successful accounts that we saw is they stood up a Slack channel and it was all about innovation. And they invited certain people to that channel that they knew were gonna work on the projects and they knew had that innovation mind or open mind. Mm -hmm. And that was very successful. But with that count in Atlanta, the management did not communicate out properly to their teams, what's going on, what's the benefits to the company. And by the way, what are the benefits to you, you know? Yeah. You look at the, I think you did the video with um, Elaine and about diversity. And I bet you guys talked about generational stuff. We but, certainly did. Yeah. We see people losing teams all the time um, or younger generation on their teams. They, they leave because organizations won't change fast enough. Right. So, and because generations don't know how to communicate with each other, which is back to your second point. Yeah. And, and uh, yes, yes. And I bet you guys talked about that too, because that's a we whole did. nother discussion. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so we advocate a couple of things um, at Great Data Minds, and we're starting to see our organizations take advantage of them. Um, the training is one thing. We are seeing more and more of that. Um, the culture change, you know, people are starting to kind of open their eyes and look at culture change and how do we get these people to ideate and collaborate um, design thinking is big. We're seeing in a lot of successful organizations. Um, I know that a couple of our advisors uh, advocate safe. There's parts of safe that really lend to um, collaborative teams, effective teams. Mm -hmm. We call it analytics as a product, but scaled agile framework is key. We're seeing that in larger organizations that are doing data um, effectively and efficiently now. Yeah. But I'm starting to see the smaller organizations move in that direction, especially when cloud is involved. Um, let's see, I talked about the communications with management. I talked about instructor-led education. Um, you mentioned in the beginning of the call data literacy. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to see investment in data literacy. We've uh, aligned with a gentleman by the name of Ben Jones and we're representing some of his solutions, which are great. I recommend the audience check them out. But it is about getting your teams to speak effectively about their data solutions. Um, I can't tell you how many times in the many, many years of doing analytics, we delivered or we saw teams deliver uh, dashboards or 
visualizations or whatever, and people were intimidated by them. They, we, we were guilty of it. You know, they didn't understand how we got to that um, bit of information. And it just, it was a failed project once again. So data literacy is another way to bring those teams together. Mm -hmm. uh, success with that comes again with the collaboration around that data and ideation when it comes from understanding it. And then another thing, and, and I think it's my final, yeah, it's my final um, bullet here, is um, incorporating this mindset of an MVP program. Mm -hmm. So minimum viable product, not most valuable player, which we had one of our partners ask us. <laughs> so um, this MVP program. So instead of, you know, taking on as, a, as a, um, someone that supports data efforts at an organization, instead of going in and trying to support the business and saying, okay, you know, it's going to take you, my team, this much time, eight months is going to take, you know, probably $850,000. You know, we're going to have to bring in help here. And they go, oh, nope, that's too much. Can't do it. You know, uh, uh, uh. the best thing that they can do is start with a minimum viable program, excuse me, product. And, you know, the cool news is, um, sometimes when we're going into new organizations, we work with the top cloud partners to um, do small amounts of funding to help move these along and support our partners that are helping our customers. Mm -hmm. So um, the mindset helps because um, what you do with an MVP is you deliver a live instance and a live dashboard with say two to three sources and maybe one insight. And also at the same time you deliver an executive readout. So you, that allows the IT or the, the data group to go to the business and say, hey, we were able to do this and deliver this to you. Here's what it means, data literacy. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we were able to say, um, you're able to say, and also here's what it's going to take. But why don't you play around with this instance for a while and then let's, we'll come back to you and say, to do the additional work that you want and to get the bigger program, here's what it takes. Yeah. So it's once again, sitting in a room, doing an executive readout, <clears throat> calling an executive readout workshop. Mm -hmm. But explaining to people why this is important, why we can do it with, you know, very, these days and times you can deliver insights in days, you know. Right. So it gives those executives the aha moment and quite frankly allows executives to open up their wallets a little bit more because they have a good understanding of what's going on. Right. So those are a, a few things that we advocate and mm -hmm. I, we're seeing it work, you know, yeah. and it's a, it's a different, sometimes I feel like we're pushing stuff uphill we'll say <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it, you know and, and it's that old irritate and educate you know we just irritate people with this whole subject but inevitably we do see lack of sponsorship teams that go into that you know valley of doubt and never come yeah. back out so if you can get it early on i think it's something that everyone should look at all organizations should really look at their humans and make them the top priority when it comes to projects Right. I love it. It's not, it's not even just, it's not exclusive to the data world. These are general human principles. You've mentioned a couple of times the Valley of doubt and we can post to that in the video, but this is, this is, these are basic human concepts that, uh, that affect us with change in general. And now we're seeing a microcosm of it with an industry that's moving so fast, so much new technology, it's impossible to keep up. So you have to think about the human. So thank you so much for the insight today, Julie. And that's the PSA. Public service announcement for everybody. <laughs> Got your humans, man. We're all human. Thanks, Kaylee, for being moderator of the year. Yay. Woo. Thank you, Bye. everyone.